Hi folks! Well, it's been a while since we've had a proper project on this channel, but for the last year or more I've had this set of uh, lithium-ion batteries kicking around on my desk and I've been promising I'd make them into a proper 12 volt battery pack and when I say proper I mean I'd spot weld the connections with nickel strips rather than just soldering bits of copper wire on because although you generally get away with soldering the connections they do have a tendency to lift off after a while because it's hard to get the temperature just right and supposedly it's bad to heat up the cells too much because you can break down the little plastic separator in between the layers and things like that. So I, I set about actually doing it properly and I started off with a search on YouTube to see what other people have done and this one in particular by Creative Channel well, that inspired me to get on and do things because I think every single component the person who made this video uses was kicking around my desk somewhere with the exception of the uh, heavy gauge wire which I had in the garage. So before you watch this video, you should probably watch th that video by Creative Channel and uh, see exactly what I'm going for here. Anyway, this is going to be part one, spot welder. But before we roll the credits, um, I don't know if anyone noticed, I've switched off the adverts for the last three or four videos I made, and this one's going to have no adverts either. Um, when I try and show people my videos on my phone, there's no ad blocker, and it annoys the hell out of me that I have to hit skip advert. So as there's little money in it, and I'm not doing this for the money anyway, I thought I'd just get rid of the adverts for everyone. Anyway, let's go. Now I'm just going to play you a tiny sample of the Creative Channel Spot Welder video because I want to show you a couple of the problems that I'm trying to avoid that uh, are in this particular welder that the person put together. Um, he's using far too much heat here. You, you really shouldn't be getting visible red hot and you can see the metal's discoloured. And also you've got an inconsistent welding pressure on the electrodes. So I thought I'd try and put together a solution that actually addresses those problems and works the way that I think it should work. So we'll just quickly discuss the theory of operation here. Here's my rewired microwave oven transformer. The bottom one is the original mains voltage coil. Mains goes in there, generates a magnetic field inside here. Magnetic field needs somewhere to go. Goes out of these two turns of wire around here and comes out this end, uh, I don't know exactly, I haven't measured it, but around about two volts, two and a half volts at lots of amps, probably about 600 amps or so. So we funnel our lots of amps of electricity out of these wires down into some kind of contact point, and you can just about see on this battery, there's little circles there and there, there and there, there and there, there and there. And those are the contact points where this was welded in the first place. So they've had some kind of shaped copper rods that come down, little pointy bits push in there, pulse the current through there, and it melts just enough metal to fuse the metal together at those spots, and that makes the best possible connection you can get. Now there's actually a few refinements you can do in this process, and one, the one that I want to implement in this controller is what's called double pulse welding. So when the electrodes press down on this nickel strip, they're not necessarily making a perfect contact. So what you can do is you send a very small pulse through just to soften the metal here, and then the pressure of the electrodes, you have a little delay time, the pressure of the electrodes during that time will deform this slightly softened metal to make a better contact, and then you send another larger pulse through to actually melt the metal properly and fuse it together. So I've drawn a quick diagram of what we're looking to achieve here. So here's our battery with our contact points on there. We've got our two turn winding on this big microwave oven transformer, and that's gonna give us one, two volts, many, many amps. And on the main side of this, we're taking in, I think it's a 700 watt transformer. So we're pulling round about three amps from the main side. I'm gonna use a solid state relay to control the mains on and off for that. So I can do fairly tight timings on this some kind of timer here that controls that solid state relay and a push button to actually trigger the welding cycle. 
So here's the little microprocessor I'm going to use for my double pulse timer circuit. Um, it's a Node MCU model. It's a little Wi-Fi enabled microprocessor. It's actually a reasonably powerful chip, but I'm not going to use any of the Wi-Fi functionality. I'm using this solely because it was already on my desk at the time. Um, compared to other microprocessors, it is a bit limited on the I.O. pins it's got. It's only got one analog in down there, but that doesn't really bother me because I'm not connect connecting too much hardware to it. Um, also, because it was already on my desk plugged into the breadboard, I've got one of these dirt cheap little Hantech.cn OLED displays. They're like three quid a piece on eBay, something like that. Cheapest cheerful ones. Uh, yellow screen at the top and blue at the bottom. It's just a film over the top of a white OLED display. The other things I'm going to be using for this are this solid state relay. Um, it's a 40 amp rated relay. It's massive overkill for what I need. It's again very cheap off eBay, these Fotec brand things. Um, but you know 40 amp I'm going to be pulling three or four amps through it probably. It shouldn't die in too much of a hurry. Um, I've also added on a little rotary encoder so I can work my way through menus and change settings and things like that. And the final bit is uh, just a micro switch for triggering the weld pulse. So things have moved on a bit since I last used a Node MCU, which was about 18 months ago. Um, it's no longer one size fits all for the firmware and you need to go to this nodemcu-build.com website where you can pick the modules you actually want to build into your Node MCU board. So I'm going to use the analog to digital controller, bitwise operations. I want I2C for talking to the display. I need the rotary encoder and I need the UHG graphics library. And then I want to select the fonts that I'm using with this because the default fonts are very small. So I'm going to pick a larger font from the list here and I'm going to choose the 13 by 8 bold font. And then you click apply, scroll down and click on build. And a couple of minutes later you get an email much like this one telling you that your firmware is ready for download and it lists the modules that you included. So I'm going to try and show you this thing in operation if I can get the camera pointed the right way. On power up we load up saved config from the file system built into the Node MCU thing. And uh, here's my little display. I've got my pulse, pulse 1 length, delay length and pulse 2 length and I can twiddle my rotary encoder to change those values. They go in steps of four milliseconds at the moment. The display is rather slow to update. It's quite laggy doing all of this. Um, single click cycles me through the menu items. If I double click, we save the config. If I long press, we load the config up from the disk. So if I set some silly values and then I can just reload the saved config back to four. And then, oh, back to 20, come on, there we go. And then when I click this button, you can see the LED on the solid state relay gives a short flash, long flash with a delay in the middle. So I mean, if I just, just for the sake of it, I'll twiddle up to uh, half a second on or thereabouts, half a second delay, something close enough, and another half second pulse, and we'll give that a go. Half second, there we go. So I've got fine control over the pulses and the switching of that relay. Um, let's have a very quick look at the code for this because looking at other people's code I find terribly dull and I always skip those bits of other people's videos. So I'll keep this to under 30 seconds. Okay, so very quickly through the code. Um, we set up a bunch of variables when we start up, what pins we're using, things like that. First actual thing we do is switch the output off, turn the solid state relay off in case we've recovered from a crash or something like that. We want to make sure we don't leave the transformer energized for any length of time. Um, I've got a function which loads the config from disk, function which saves the config to disk. This is horrendous code because I don't know Lua this programming language. Um, I understand it's a World of Warcraft scripting language. I don't know how to split strings so I just saved one byte per file for my config. Um, we set up the rotary encoder here, we initialize our LED display there, OLED display. Um, this is a function that just writes the top line, the yellow line at the top of the screen. Um, these writes the blue lines. Uh, the display is very slow updating so I wanted to 
keep the routines as small as possible. This is the action when our micro switch is triggered, which is one of these general purpose I.O. pins. Um, I've wrapped it in lots and lots of conditions here, but I've actually kept the timing loops very tight and free from any logic to try and keep the pulse length as it should be when it's selected. Um, if I had conditional statements in there, it'd have to do extra processing and the timings would be a bit strange. Uh, what to do when we turn the rotary encoder, which is increment and decrement values and update the display. Uh, what to do when we click, which selects the next line of config, pulse one, pulse two or delay. What to do on double click, which calls our save function and what to do on long press, which calls the load function. That's it, I'm done with the code. Here's a quick look at the wiring diagram for this Node MCU board. Rather helpfully, all the useful pins, or just about all, there's an analog input over there, but the rest of the useful pins are located down one side of this board. So on D1 and D2, I've got the data lines for this little OLED display. On D3, I've got the solid state relay connected up. On D5, 6 and 7, I've got the rotary encoder and the only other things I've got connected on that side at the moment are the power. OK, so that's uh, the timer worked out. So far, so good. In the next video, we'll actually put some power through this transformer and see what voltage we get on the output. Um, try out using the solid state relay to actually switch that in and out and uh, maybe start work on designing a case to hold all of these bits together. So hope you've enjoyed this, folks. and. Uh, Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.